Ed Boyd. Now, what about the seven days? What was the point? What was the thinking? Well, when we, when we originally designed this, there was no seven-day wait. So, actually, <laughs> I'm afraid we're probably going to agree on this. It's probably worth saying, though, I don't think any government of any colour has ever thanked for reforming welfare. It's important to do because it changes people's lives, whether it's Labour trying to bring in tax credits in 2003 or this government with universal credit. But one of the things everyone seems to be missing is when this is fully rolled out, the estimates are about 250 to 300,000 more people oh, will no, be in right. work that as a result. That was based on 2014-15 data, a small sample, <laughs> and before the, cu uh, the cuts came in in the 2015 budget. So, it, so that's, in dis that's in disingenuous to, to say that, Ed. So, so it was 300,000 before, afterwards it was 250, and that mm -hmm. data rolled out past any changes government has made. If it's 200,000, 150, 300, that's still a but massive effect. On. That's why we support it. Right, but uh, we've got from you an admission you would get rid of the seven day waiting period. There is no rationale, it's just a way of saving money that you're not paying benefits. It saves about days. 140 million. Right. There was a rationale that if people are in, sh in uh, out of work for a short period of time, they wouldn't need benefits, but it's not the right thing. Okay. I think you need to strengthen that Next and get rid one. of it. Next one is not the first, seven, the first seven day waiting period, but then paying people monthly mm. in arrears. Mm. Now, that one is is training you mm. to be, you know, benefit system aligned with the, 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 the way work works. Yes, but the ONS uh, figures that they published yesterday show that people on the lowest incomes, a quarter of them are still paid weekly or monthly, uh, weekly or fortnightly. And we want to have alternative uh, pay arrangements which are offered to everyone, not the obscure arrangements and guidance that we have now that nobody seems to know what to do about, so that everybody has the chance to have alternative pay uh, fortnightly. Also, that it doesn't just go to a single householder, which is what happens at the moment, um, which predominantly are men. Uh, it's very discriminatory against women, so it should be split if that's uh, an option. And also that it can go, the housing element could go directly to the landlord. Ed, when you designed this paying people in arrears, a month in arrears, was that, was that, is that a problem or is that a feature of the system that you were... You it's a really positive thing. We've got to realise when this is rolled out, seven million or seven or eight million will be on universal credit. The majority of them will be in work. The overwhelming majority of those will be pay being paid monthly. To make sure that universal credit works with being in work, you've got to have them paid at the same time. Because if you're paid more money in work, you get slightly less benefit. If you have uh, benefit paid fortnightly or separate from that, your earnings will go up and down and it'll be very difficult to but, manage your income. So, that, that's so for most people it works well. It, for most it does, but for people who have difficulty budgeting or managing money for a month, of whom there are reports of there being quite a few, mm. they're used to getting money in the stages at which they spend them and it's, it's very difficult for them to manage. Now, that might sound a little bit patronising, but the that is what everybody says is the fact. Well, you, you say that, the, and I'm worried we're going to end up arguing about data far too much here, but 3% of jobs are paid fortnightly in the UK. It is a tiny proportion of people who are paid at that level. And this is where universal credit is revolutionary, because instead of saying, you can't budget well, so we'll adapt the whole system to you, it says, do you know what? We're going to try and make sure that you can get a budget advance or something if you need it. This is about changing someone's life. It's about wrapping around support that says, if you can't manage your money well, we're going to help get you debt support. That is one of the big transformational the things. Okay, it's positive. No one wants to talk about the that. The principles so much. about that. No, no, that, that's not fair. The principles, absolutely, we, we support. But what, what Ed's describing just isn't there. So the principles about simplification around ensuring work pays, both getting into work and progressing into work, that just doesn't happen. And then we have the administrative cock ups that, that just. So <laughs> mean for it's you, an it is nonsense. a good idea, badly executed. Uh, there are some designs, well, I mentioned straight uh, at the outset about um, a single single householder oh, right, um, right. The, the fact that it's only paid monthly we also have the fact that uh, severe disability premiums weren't transferred across so the th most severely disabled people are about three thousand two hundred pounds uh, a year were, right. were, were I could go on I mean so, so, so the can Croydon say people on universal credit are worse off than they were on yeah. the previous yeah. scheme but when you devised it yeah you weren't quite as mean as it's turned out to be right I mean if you're going to do something as ambitious as that doesn't it make sense to spend money on it, to invest in making it work in the early days, well, rather than threatening to discredit it by penny pinching at the corners. Yeah, I think the way that we'd frame it is we uh, invented it slightly more generously than it is now. First important point before that to say, you know, if you look at all of the data, you know, with, uh, in amongst all the changes, 
people are more likely to be in work and earning more money under this system rather than the old system. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better some than groups, the old some, system. Some groups, say, if you look at different the, family structures, that's not always the case. Single parents are, are definitely worse off. I had a single parent nurse who was transferring from tax credits to universal credit. She had a six-week delay. The rent arrears uh, was served an eviction notice when she came to see me at my surgery. And this is happening all over the place. Single I just parents respond to that brief. Yeah. With, with single parents, you can take one case study like that, but let's take the whole. If you are, say, a single parent with two kids, under the old system working 16 hours, you got tax an effective rate of 96% if you tried to earn more money. The new system, it's, th it's uh, 63%. It's a 10 we're getting, times we're better than the previous system. We're bedazzled with numbers. We're going to see whether the government reforms on this in the, bows on this in the next few days. Thanks both very much Thank indeed. You.